So, hey guys, are you frustrated with where you're at right now? Maybe stunted in your progress? Well, if you are, I want to recommend a place for you to go called Growth Day. Growthday.com forward slash ed. It is the number one personal development app on the planet. It's got all kinds of high performance techniques in there, courses, accountability, journaling, live speeches from some of the top influencers in the world, including me. It's an overall environment to change your life. Growthday.com forward slash ed. Man, I'm so excited to be talking about personal development with you because every time I do, I get fired up. In here. And if I think of something you're known for, especially when we see you on stage or you're on your podcast, you have a certain kind of uh, confidence and energy and presence that I think draws people in, but also builds that kind of trust and assurance that you kind of have it, you know, and I'm going to guide you. I'm going to help you through this. You have it too. We both reflect it a little bit differently, but even when we started today, when you came on the camera, I said, I'm instantly smiling when I'm with you. And that's because you radiate that type of confidence as well. So it's such a great topic because even when I work with athletes, you know, like when we're done today, I'm working with one of my UFC fighters and people say, what do you really work with? Is it their visualizations? Is it, and I do do those things, but if you, even with the top of the top athletes that I work with, the number one thing they struggle with is their confidence level. Mm -hmm. And it's building, building it back, gaining the momentum of it again, remembering where it came from initially. And mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons so many people, and even myself, to some extent, the last couple of years lost a little bit of it is our promises we were capable of keeping to ourselves were taken from us. So I see self-confidence almost like it's mm. a reputation that you have with yourself. And if you have a reputation with yourself where you keep the promises that you make to you, you begin to stack those promises on top of each other. You develop what we call self-confidence. When I have not held self-confidence, if I look back 90 days or 120 days or even a year, at some point, I stopped keeping the promises I made to myself. And they can be small wow. things like, yeah, what time I get up in the morning? How much water am I going to drink every day? How many contacts am I going to make in my business? How, how many pages of a book am I going to read? And those things seem very small. Even making my bed, they seem very small. But when you start stacking up these little things, like, oh, I do the things I tell myself I'm going to do. Yes. And when, when the stuff happened the last couple of years, our opportunities to deliver on promises we made to ourselves were for the most part taken away from us. The, the normal routines and habits we had about going to a gym, even as simple as things like that, or even contact in business, going to an office every day. And so these things changed. And then we wake up 90 days or a year later and we go, I don't really feel like I've got what I had before. Yeah. And so I always go back, even with the athletes I work with, or even myself, where can I begin to build baseline self-confidence? Baseline mm -hmm. self-confidence is keeping these promises. Superhuman self-confidence, no pun intended, is right behind me if, if they're watching the video. It's keeping the promises you make to yourself and then doing one more. Oh, so if I, I say it. I'm going to make 10 contacts in a day, I make my 10, I do it one more. Now I've not just kept the promises, I've elevated the standard. Because in our life, you know this, I believe we don't get our goals most of the time. We, what delivers on our goals are the standards we set. And so the higher yes. the standard, the, the deeper our self-confidence goes. So one of the keys for me has been rebuilding the structures around which I keep the promises I make to me. And the duration mm. in which I do it is causing the depth of the self-confidence level that I have. So for me, it starts mm. with basic habits and routines and things that I commit. This may seem really small. My daughter, one of the com commitments I've made to myself is I will talk to my daughter every day. She's away at Clemson in college. You think, what does this have to do with business? It has everything to do because I'm a really busy dude. It's easy for me to just text her. Right. I actually call her. Hey, Bella Boo, it's daddy. I did it this morning. Except now I do it and I do it one more time a day. Now I'm like a superhuman confident dad because how many dads <laughs> are doing that, right? And I also, and I'm going to let you jump in because I'm curious for you. I actually believe there's a part of us that goes, I'm getting what I deserve. I'm mm. getting what I deserve. The external results I'm producing have a lot to do with internally what I believe I'm worth yeah. and what I believe I deserve. Yes. And if you're like me, I don't naturally have a proclivity to believe I'm worth a lot. I wasn't mm. raised with a bunch of praise and belief being poured into me. I'm very self-critical. When I make a mistake, I'm my own worst critic. Even to this day, I have to really battle that. And even when I'm winning sometimes, candidly, I'll be vulnerable is this a fluke? You know, like, am I fooling everybody right now? And yeah. so this stuff we're talking about has been fundamental in my life to changing my life is me believing 
man, I'm doing things most people aren't willing to do. I deserve to get stuff most people yes. aren't going to end up getting. And so for me, it's the it's the beginning of keeping those promises you make to yourself. And then I've got some other stuff too when we come back to it. But do you relate to that? Is that part of your recipe too? Thousand percent, thousand. And I think researchers find that like they might use other language. They might be, hey, that's keeping personal commitment. Same thing. Hey, that's integrity. Mm -hmm. That's self trust. Mm -hmm. And the language I use for that, that's just congruence. Yes. I say I'm going to do it. I do it. I was congruent. Yes. If I say I'm going to do it and I don't do it, I break that congruence. And the more breaks, then the more breaks in my psyche, the more yes. breaks in my identity, the more breaks in my rhythm. And you know? I a million percent agree with you on that. There is a rhythm, you know, some might call it a vibrational frequency or a rhythm to success. There's a rhythm to confidence. And yeah. when you're in that rhythm, the words flow a little bit different. Yes. People, places and things flow to you a little bit differently. And you have a rapport with yourself and with other yeah. people when you're in that rhythm. It's funny that you say it because my son had to take a bunch of time off from golf. He had a, a knee injury and he lost that confidence and that rhythm. And even myself, when I've lost it, it's almost like and you can be so close to the way you were before, but it's just not what it was. It's almost like you ever be in a wedding and you watch that dude and he's got the moves right? <laughs> but he's dancing to the lyrics, not the beat of the music. So it's oh, just that's not, me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just what I've heard. Okay. <laughs> but, but it's that lack. And that's why you can say, man, I'm saying the same things I was saying six months ago, but I'm not producing the same result. It's yes. that rhythm is off. You're, you're dancing to the lyric, not the beat yes. of the music. Yes. And there's a beat to it. And I think you're a million percent right about that, Brennan. And I think once you find that groove, it's like, you know, momentum is a magnifier. Momentum is a rhythm. Momentum yes. can take a person who's pretty average and ordinary like me. And you start getting enough momentum on enough rhythm. You're like, whoa, you have these yeah. superhuman things you begin to achieve. What's important about what you're also saying is that here's what's really important. Both of us are saying this is an internal game. It's not mm. contingent on the external praise or right. even producing the result to yes. generate confidence. In other words, the game I've set up isn't outcome driven, it's process driven. Yeah, did you engage the process today as a win? Yes, that's the, for me, it's like all I can control, I can control my attitude, and my activity, everybody knows that. But I'm mm. linking that to my confidence, not the production of the result. If your confidence is constantly contingent on the result, you'll be chasing your tail most of the time. Mm. be chasing your tail so it's an internal game it's also not i don't need the affirmation of another person to get self-confidence self-confidence means it has to do with one's self i'll give you another big key for me and this really flipped things i've talked to you about these conversations i had with wayne dyer mm. and a lot of times my confidence is not even predicated on my ability mm -hmm. because there may be somebody smarter than me or better than me a better speaker a better marketer a better whatever so when I walk into, even today, I'm confident today. Let me tell you why. I give myself credit for my intentions. So my confidence, I've linked to my intent to serve, my intent to do good, and not necessarily my ability to. So even when yes. I speak, I mean, I'm a pretty good speaker, right? But it's, I'm not out there going, I'm the world's greatest speaker. My confidence comes from, I've prepared, I've kept the promises I made to myself and my intentions. Yes. Not enough precious human beings say, I'm a good woman. I'm a good right. man. I deserve to be successful. I'm, I'm walking into this business meeting and I intend to do good. I intend to help these people. I should be confident. Yes. They, they think they've conflated, go, no, 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 but I'm not as good as I need to be. That's not where your confidence should be linked to, or even the outcome. Link it to your intentions, because that's something you know to be true about you. I can always yeah. go back, Brennan, no matter where I am in the world, no matter what I'm doing. The one thing I do believe about me is I'm a good man. I intend to serve. I intend to contribute. Yes. I generate a tremendous amount of confidence in my intentions, not necessarily my ability or the result. And I think right. this is something that's never taught in the self-confidence world. Yep. But listen, your intent matters. You should generate tremendous strength from your intentions. Yet most good people just sort of they they slough it off. They don't give themselves any credit for their intent. In other words, right. this doesn't they think, oh, everybody intends to serve. Everybody's good. Nah, 
Right. Not so fast. And worse, you lose it. You lose it sometimes, meaning people lose the 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 time or the practice of setting the intention. Oh, so even if they are good, they don't even set the intention, so they can't give themselves credit for it. So you'll love this little psychological trick. We call it a doorway trigger. Doorway trigger is anytime you enter a doorway, you say something to yourself. Mm -hmm. So mine is when I walk through a door, I always say, I enter this room, a happy man, ready to serve. By the way, the trigger thing is huge. We should talk a little bit more about that too, but because you can make deposits when you are confident that you can make withdrawals from later. So let's talk about that in a second. But like, for example, this fighter that I'm going to work with later today, she has a very major fight coming up. And one of the things, I just want her to have a simple self-talk that gives her confidence. And actually, we've been working on it now for three months leading up to this fight. And here's what it is. I find a way to win. I find a way to win. Mm, I, I find a way to win. And I make her repeat it to me with different emphasis. So she'll say things like, I find a way to win. I find a way to win. She'll say, I find a way to win. And then other times I'll have her say, I find a way to win. And we emphasize this over and over and over. It becomes like an embedded command. If anybody knows any NLP stuff, right? Yeah. But it's just self-talk that's repeated over and over again. And it's funny how the mind works. If you begin to repeat this over and over again, it becomes a believable belief. And our mind moves towards what we're most familiar with. So if we're familiar with that thought, I tell you right now, in this fight, when it gets down to crunch time, and she's in that, what I they call it, deep water. When she's yes. taken out to the deep water, she might be getting submitted. And she's tired, and she's going to come back to this. I find, I find a way to win. And I believe what we believe to be most true, we end up producing long-term in our life. I just hope it shows up in the fight. Right. But you're exactly right with the self-talk. I'm curious, do you do anything, because I do, when you to anchor a state when you have confidence so that you can make the withdrawal later? Do you do that? Like when you're really feeling it, do you do anything to create that trigger or that anchor? Yeah. Um, mine's dorky and self-reflective. Like when I capture, I go, oh, I got it. And I'd write it down. And I'd uh, tell myself, write it down. And go, because I know I'll forget that state or that moment. Or even if I do myself physically anchoring, mm -hmm. you know, 10 minutes later, the emotion's gone. Yeah. So I want to know what was the aha? What was the breakthrough? Oh, I got it. And I write it down. So it's almost like a reward or a celebration or refraction. And to me, I have to write it down, partially because I had a brain injury way back in the day. Yeah. So my memory and my cues aren't as easy to reflect, like consciously. To, I remember it. I have to write it down. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I just want to say and re reflect that coaching you're giving her is so great because I've always defined confidence as the belief in one's ability to figure things out. My confidence is. I believe I can figure this out, which is another way of saying, I will find a way. Yes. It's, the sa it's literally the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I will find a way to win is I believe I can figure this out. It's a, I like yours better because the deeper level of commitment and adding the win to it. I think that's so important. But you mentioned you have something that you do. Uh, well, when I, really feel, when I really feel something, this is maybe a little bit technical, but I think it's worth sharing for those that want to experience it. When I'm feeling, I think we... I think confidence is an emotion also. Right. So it's not only a thought, it's not only a state of being, but it's an emotion. And there is a neurochemistry to all of our emotions. And so when I am feeling particularly confident, this is just what most people don't ever do in their life. They don't take advantage of states they find themselves in so they can go mm. back to them later, to your point mm. about the trigger and the anchor. So when I am in a state of achievement, let's just say, or confidence, I like to just do something very simple physically that anchors that state in my body. It's not really dramatic either. It's kind of sure. nerdy and nerdy and dorky also. But for example, if I'm on the stage and I'm just, it's, it's being crushed or I'm just feeling the flow in a podcast or I'm in a beautiful moment with my daughter where I'm yeah. feeling particularly confident as a father, whatever it is. My daughter this morning, when I called, she called me back, Brennan. She's like, she had a major test today. Her and her roommate called and said, dad, they're going to the test. Dad, we need words of wisdom. We need some motivation. <laughs> my daughter, yeah. and by the way, it's bizarre to me at this stage in my life, bro, that my daughter <laughs> now doesn't... seeks this from me because I got eye rolls her entire teenage years when I'm giving her <laughs> these same docs, right? Circle of life right there. Absolutely. Yeah, but so, so I started out and what I, she caught me off guard. So the first thing I said was like, okay, dad, thanks. You know, it was like, but then I kind of crushed a couple other recommendations that I gave her, right? 
And I, when we were done, I'm like, no, that was a good dad moment right there. I crushed that as a dad. And so when I'm feeling a particular level of confidence, I'll anchor it with just some type of physical move. So like it might yeah. be, for me, it's a lot. It's like a finger snap. I'm on the stage, I'm crushing, boom. I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm depositing that confident state into yes. my neurochemistry. Yes. I'm making a deposit. And so yeah. when I'm feeling it, I deposit it. With my athletes, you just hit a home run, you better when you're running around those bases, give me the finger snap or slap your chest or pull on your ear or tug on the helmet. You yes. better anchor this amazing state. Now it's anchored. And the more we repeatedly do the same physical, simple move, in a particular state, those are deposits. Then when I need to make a withdrawal and I'm feeling a bit insecure when I'm about to walk out on stage, bam, finger snap, puts my neurochemistry back in that state again. Yes. You can even tell as I'm saying this to you now, my energy levels right. change. You're opening, yeah. I'm opening. And so this, some, for some people, that's too much. But for a lot of people, it's like, that's it. When I'm feeling good, do something and do the same thing repeatedly, whatever it might be. That's why you'll yeah. watch a lot. Of, you can learn so much from an athlete. You yeah. watch an athlete get out of the batter's box and adjust their batting gloves, or they tap home plate the same two times, right? Or the golfer right. does the same two practices. The pattern of a rhythm, yeah. Right. Or Tom Brady, let's go! Or Peyton yeah. Manning, Omaha! You know, whatever it might be. <laughs> These are verbal or physical triggers that yes. are from previous self-confident peak performance states that they're now calling on now when they need the most. Right. And so that's the sort of the... That's the science part of self-confidence. The other stuff is sort of the art form of it. One yes. of the things that that I'm s still sort of surprised by when I work with people or they come to events is lack of clarity. And, and if I would add on top of that is a lack of specificity. So, right. you know, you say, well, I want to lose weight. That you're not going to get a lot of self confidence coming from that statement. Specifically, what does that mean? Is it about, a, is it pounds? Is it body fat? Is it a percentage? Clarity is specificity. And right. so I want to, you know, I want to have a good year in business. I want to have my best month. What exactly specifically does that mean? So that when you look at that board, it's there's specificity all over it. I almost think sometimes that building the muscle of setting specific outcomes and specific visual things is something people need to work on. For whatever reason, of all the things I'm not good at, that has never been a struggle of mine. I've never been vague. I've always really yeah. been very specific because I want to know whether I hit it or not, but that's what creates clarity. It's like, if I'm looking at a, a, a golf hole, like we were talking about golf earlier, you and I off camera, if I, you know, I'm my average player. So what I'm really trying to do, which I was just talking about this this weekend in a golf tournament, I'm trying to hit it on the green, which is a <laughs> right. big old 60 foot green, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm an amateur. And that's right. why I lack confidence. Yes. The truth is, a professional player is trying to hit it to a spot on the green that's about six inches wide. Right. Right. <laughs> and that specificity creates clarity for them in the shot. And the so target. they're far better than me because the target is so specific. Yes. And even if they were to miss, they're going to be much closer than me because they were so much more specific in their focus than I was with my wide focus yes. or lack of focus. Some people that are worse than me at golf aren't even trying to hit the green. They're just trying to hit the ball, right? <laughs> right. And that's some, and that's a metaphor for life. And so yeah. you're 100%. And one of the things that also creates clarity is this notion that I've been here before, meaning you are, like, take a speech. You're exactly right. And I know you're one of the greats of all time. You've walked out there in your mind before you've gone there. You walked out for this podcast before you've gone there. We, you 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 project yourself into that space and see it happening to the point even when I was in when I'm selling I even picture them hugging me at the end and thanking me it's that wow. level of specificity it's that level of so that when I get there and that that rhythm starts to happen it's familiar see I don't yes. want to end up in if I can help it I want to minimize the unfamiliar and mm. so if I projected I prepared, I projected a lot of my self-confidence comes from the fact that I've prepared and I've been there in my mind. I've been there before. So you're ex that Love helps that. create clarity for me. And then I'll give you yeah. one more thing to kick around. You know, it's, it's surprising to me, no matter what your faith is. So if you're a Christian or a Muslim or Jew or Hindu, or you practice Buddhism, or maybe you believe like I do and I'm a Christian, but also I believe in energy. I believe in the quantum, right? 
Yeah. And people say to me, I believe there's an all powerful source, or I'm a follower of Jesus. And it's interesting to me, whatever their belief system is, that they don't derive any self confidence personally from it. Interesting. Like, right. Why would you not link your faith, whatever faith it is you practice, mm. to your confidence? Like as a Christian, if yeah. you're a Christian, like, I'm the son of the king of kings. His DNA is running through my veins. Yes. Why in the world would that not give me some dadgum confidence? Right. Look at the quantum and you can plug into an all-knowing knowledge field. Shouldn't you get a little confidence from that? So <laughs> it's interesting to me how people go, well, I have a lot of faith. I'm in the synagogue or the mosque or I'm at church on Sunday. But somehow Monday morning when business starts, I'm alone now. Right. You're alone now? You're right. not alone now. Your faith right. tells you and informs you otherwise. And yes. so you start having the combination of anchors and triggers, keeping the promises you make to yourself, your intentions, your clarity, all yes. these things we're talking about. And then you stack on top of that. I have a faith in something bigger than me that's with me yes. all the time. I ought to have some boldness and confidence solely stemming from that. So, so many of you that have faith, why are you checking that at the door when it comes to your relationships, your body, your business, your money? That should be centerpiece of your self-confidence. should be the most important piece of your self-confidence. And I know it is for you. I love it. I, my favorite words in, in my faith in terms of Christianity is, he precedes me. Right. <laughs> it's like, he precedes me. Like, this, every, this has already worked out. Yes. Somebody already worked it out. Now, I need to find my way through. I need to figure out a way to win. I need to, you know, hopefully figure it out. Yeah. But where it's going to go, I have trust. Since we're being completely real, you know, my people that see me speaks backstage are like, so I saw you do your move where you're snapping your fingers. But what's the last thing you'll see me do? I actually get on my knees and I pray very quickly because that's where my mm -hmm. real confidence comes from. It's the, it's, um, you know, here's what it's done for me. I've never said this to somebody, and maybe you and I can kick this around the last few minutes. I think also we put a pressure on ourselves. Like, am I going to make the right decision or the wrong one? Am I going to say the right thing or the wrong thing? And I have found in my life, and I have this rooted in my belief system, that when I've come to a place where I have to yield or make a decision, I don't necessarily think most of the time. Now, there is right and wrong in life. We all know that. I'm not talking about ethics or morals. I'm not referring to that. I'm talking about if something goes one way or the other. I've really built this belief system that I'll make either one work. So yeah. if I if I decide this way and I might be wrong, I'll find a way to make that work. And if I go that way and I was going to be right, I'll make that one work. There's this notion that's sort of put into us when we're children, like good or bad, right or wrong. And we start feeling this pressure like... What if I don't say the right thing? What if I don't do the right thing? The yes. truth is in life, most of the time, that path, that journey, both can lead to bliss. Both can lead to success. It might be a different path. It might not be to your point on your schedule. It might be on God's schedule. And if you have a God that's a pro at, that created the entire universe, you're probably going to be okay no matter which turn <laughs> you take. Yes. And that gives you a confidence to go, I'm going to call the shot with the most information, with the with, with the best of my ability, but I'm going to make either one of these work. That's real yes. confidence. Oh, I love it. I'm going to make either one of these works because the truth is, whichever one you take, path A or B, turns out good or bad, most people go, well, one's going to be good and one's going to be catastrophic and Correct. it's going to be terrible. Right. And I go, well, the truth is, right or wrong, the next step actually is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. If you fail, the next step, demands that you summon the best of who you are to handle it. If you win, guess what? The next step is going to demand that you summon the best of who you are, no matter what. So I always tell people, you want confidence? It's easy. Know your job. You have one job every day, summon the best of who you are to really work life. And at the same time, trust life or God, I think is one of the ultimate secrets of the most successful people I've ever met. I a million percent agree. And I think actually today's conversation is sort of evidence of everything we've said. We both set out with an intention to serve today. There's been this incredible rhythm between the different things that we've, you know, said here together. And if I'd add one last thing to it, it's also that you could take on an identity of yourself too, which is that I'm kind of a learner. Like yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I was curious where this was going to go today. And I learned. And yes. when I come to these decisions or these experiences I'm going to have, you know, at a minimum, I'm going to learn something about myself, about how to do it better. 
you know, even with an athlete, I keep going back to these examples, but like, I'll tell them that at bat, yeah, you ground it out, but you learned this guy's curveball does this. You look, so the next at bat, you're more prepared for what he's going to bring to you. Yes. And so this notion of I'm learning, um, I don't know, for me, it reduces the pressure. It increases yeah. the curiosity. And it also, I'm almost always winning if I'm learning. Yes. I'm almost always winning if I'm learning. And so I've sort of adopted in my life this notion that I'm curious and I'm going to learn. It's going to be an experience I'm going to learn. I found that I actually produced the outcome that I actually had on my board, to your point for clarity, far more regularly when I'm not so addicted to the outcome and everything I want to do. Because addiction to outcome can rob you of confidence. But mm. when I am committed to the process that you've described earlier, and also this notion that I'm going to gather a better me at the other side of this, because I will have learned something about me, the circumstances, the environment, how to do it better the next time, whatever that might be, I get a lot of confidence when I approach yes. things that way. So, hey, guys, as you know, I've partnered up with my good friend, Brennan Bruchard, who's created the greatest personal development system that has ever been designed called Growth Day. If you go to growthday.com forward slash ed, you can get all the information, but it's that time of year where everybody's trying to form new habits. They've got new resolutions and goals, and you need an environment, and you need some coaches, and you need to be able to do it super inexpensively. And that's where growthday.com forward slash ed comes in. There's everything from journaling to accountability programs, live messages every Monday from myself and other influencers. There's an opportunity for you to, to get courses that would cost thousands of dollars completely for free. It's incredible. Go to growthday.com forward slash ed and check it out. You were put down and these beliefs were given to you, what happens is your mind tries to prove beliefs true, so it finds references. So once you think it, your mind finds an example of your life where you weren't enough, another one where you weren't enough, you weren't smart enough, you weren't pretty enough, you weren't handsome enough, you weren't strong enough, and it finds these references and it builds like a leg and multiple legs under table and pretty soon you can't move it and it's stuck in there as a firm belief. That's why we have to guard our beliefs so preciously because our mind goes to work on finding these legs, these references, which are real experiences in our life to prove to us that that belief is true. And so although you may believe it to be true about you, these doubts and negative thoughts you have, these were not your original thoughts. That's a powerful thing to understand because you weren't born this way. You weren't born doubting. You were born perfect. You were born believing you were gonna do something great. You were born happy. You were born believing you were gonna do something special with your life. As a baby, I promise you, you had no negative self-talk. You had no negative self-doubt. These are external sources. It's so important to know because those thoughts aren't really who you are. They're somebody else's thoughts they gave you because of how they felt about themselves. And so today we're gonna to talk about how to build self-confidence and how to eliminate self-doubt. So how do we build this self-confidence? The process of building self-confidence is actually very easy. Believe it or not, self-confidence is self-trust. Self-confidence is building a reputation with yourself that you keep your word to you, that you keep the promises you make to you. When I meet somebody who has a ton of self-confidence, I don't look at that as somebody with a big ego. There's a difference. Somebody with self-confidence has a reputation with themselves that I do the things I say I'm going to do. That's where self-confidence comes from. When I meet someone who's not self-confident, I know this is someone who has consistently made promises to themselves they've not kept. They've started a diet and done it for a while but not kept it. They've made a commitment and goals to go make a certain amount of money in business and they started down the road but then they didn't deliver on it long term. To get up at a certain time in the morning and then they don't do it. And so they have a process and a habit in their life more often than not of not keeping the promises they don't make to other people. They don't keep the promises they make to themselves. And so the cool thing is self-confidence is an internal game. You do not need external accolades, external admiration in order to build self-confidence. You don't need any of those external forces. It's all done internally. You control this. And you control this by beginning today to keep the promises you make to yourself. And you have to stack the deck in your favor. Stack the game so you win. It's not good enough just to keep the promises you make to yourself. You must acknowledge it when you do it to you to give yourself credit to create confidence momentum is what I call it. So whether that's setting the deck where you're gonna get up a little bit earlier, you're gonna make a certain amount of phone calls, you miss a certain amount of appointments, you're going to eat a certain amount of calories in your fitness. You're going to spend a certain amount of time with your children or your parents. And you begin to do these things you say you're going to do. You say simple things like, I'm going to lay out my clothes the night before I go to bed every night 
before I go to sleep so when I wake up that decision's made for me. And believe it or not, the fact that you just do something that simple that you then deliver on begins to build confidence. You say, I'm gonna stretch in the morning when I get up, and you do it, all of a sudden, I'm not gonna check my phone for 30 minutes. All these habits I teach, when you just begin to do the things you tell yourself you're going to do, you begin to build self-confidence, which is this reputation with yourself. So ask yourself a question right now. What is one thing right now, one promise I can make to myself that I'm going to begin to keep starting this minute? and begin to do it. It could be um, how often I'm gonna pick up a book and read it. But you begin to stack things you commit to do and then you deliver on them and you acknowledge them to yourself. You're in the process of building self-confidence. Why is that so important? Of all the athletes I coach, when my athletes are performing at their peak level, they're at their highest self-confidence level. In fact, I love when I watch some of the athletes I coach get interviewed and they kind of do this aw shucks, humble routine in their uh, post-game interviews. Yeah, you know, just part of the team, you know, I got a lot, I could have done a lot better today. But inside, I know these people are incredibly self-confident people. Any of you athletes listening to this, you know this, the great athletes you know have incredible amounts of self-confidence. You have to believe in you when it's a battle, when you're a hitter against a pitcher, or when you're a quarterback against a defense, or you're a defenseman in the NHL against their best offensive player, or you're a golfer and you have to make a nine-foot putt to win a tournament, right? You better have self-confidence. In fact, the separator, more often than not, at the highest level in sports, is not they're a better shooter or a better putter or throw the ball a little bit faster because everybody throws hard in the major leagues nowadays it seems, right? That separators their self-confidence. It's true in being a parent. It's true in being a business person. It's true in every area of our life. The separator at the top levels is self-confidence. So now you have that first thing that you're gonna to commit to that you're gonna deliver on. Now what I would ask you to do that now that you've done that is if you really want to build self-confidence, can you begin to extend that list of five, eight, and ten things that you are going to begin to do, that you commit to you, that you're going to do every single day to begin to stack that self-confidence? That's going to change it. Now let's go back to the self-doubt for a second. Self-doubt is the inverse of that. I don't trust me. I don't think I'm good enough. These are thoughts placed from the outside inside your mind. The minute you acknowledge that, that's not my thought, that's someone else's. That's not, you begin to eliminate, I call it like scratching the CD. When I begin to have negative self-talk, negative thoughts, I literally picture, and I'm old by the way, but I picture an old record player or a DVD and I just scratch it, I scratch it. That thought gets scratched. I, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good looking enough, I, I, I'm not fast enough, strong enough, I'm not prepared enough. I, once they enter, that's not my thought, that's something someone gave me when I was a kid and I scratch it and I literally say to myself scratch it scratch it scratch it and over time it's like a it's like a DVD or a CD or a record player over time that thought can't be played again in your recorder when you scratch it enough times so I literally picture scratching and I say scratch it I experience self-doubt I experience negative thoughts and I scratch them I scratch them I scratch them and over time it almost becomes funny it's that thoughts impact on me starts to be minimized over time every time I scratch it. I picture scratching it like a DVD or a record or a CD and I say it to myself, scratch it, scratch it, scratch it. And it, what it does is it acknowledges the thought it loses its power over me. The first time it's still got some impact on me. The second time it might, but the fourth, fifth, seventh time, all of a sudden that thought just doesn't have the impact on me anymore because I acknowledge it's not mine. I've scratched it and over time my mind just doesn't want to play that song anymore. Doesn't want to play that movie anymore. And so that's how I begin to eliminate those thoughts in my mind. I build up my self-confidence and I scratch my self-doubt. There's also this misconception from people that you are certain things, meaning some people have this misconception that I am what I possess. In other words, I am my possessions. And so they link their self-confidence to their possessions. And so they're constantly trying to acquire more and more possessions, thinking that's where they get their self-confidence from. That's how they're defined as a person. I am my possessions. Couldn't be further from the truth. It's a hollow way to try to gain self-confidence by possessing things. Nothing wrong with going for material possessions. I have all kinds of them. But I don't link my confidence to those possessions, nor am I deluded into thinking if I could just possess more things, then I'll feel better about myself. So this is a mistake. There's a flawed thought. Number one flawed thought, I am my possessions. Second flawed thought, I am my accomplishments. 
In other words, my self-confidence is only linked to what I'll accomplish. So because I haven't accomplished certain things, I don't have that certain title, that certain award, that certain recognition, I don't believe in myself. I'm riddled with self-doubt. I'm defined by my accomplishments. The difficult thing about that is now all your life you're going to have to accomplish more and more and more in order to feel self-confident and eliminate self-doubt. You are not your accomplishments. You are not your possessions. You are you. You are perfect. You are beautiful. You were born to do something great with your life. If you're a person of faith like me, you believe God made you in his image and likeness and wants you to do something great with your life, not that you are your possessions, not that you are your accomplishments. And this is the, the social media insidious influence it has in our lives. People think, I don't feel good about myself. I've got this self-doubt. The gateway to me feeling more self-confidence is if I could possess more things or if I could accomplish more things. Yes, having nice things will make you feel better about yourself. Yes, accomplishing things certainly is a reinforcement for self-confidence, but it's not the pathway to getting it. The pathway to getting it is doing something great with your life where you keep the promises you make to yourself and acknowledge this self-doubt, this self-thought, this negative talk isn't even mine. It was given to me when it was impossible for me to defend myself as a child, and maybe it even happened in adolescence, and probably some of those instances have happened for you as an adult, and these ones as an adult are like that thing I said earlier. Oh, it's another time I reinforced the table. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not prepared enough. I'm not the right race. I'm not the right gender. I don't come from the right kind of family. I don't have the right education. And we find these references as adults to reinforce these self-doubting beliefs we were given by somebody else as a child. Flawed belief is that you are your possessions. You are your accomplishments. Third flawed belief. I am what other people say I am. Wrong. You are not what other people say you are, good or bad. I see too many people that if someone says something negative about them, they believe that's who they are. This is the flawed third belief. I am my possessions. I am my accomplishments. And you know what? Or I am what other people say I am. Let me be clear with you. You are not what other people tell you you are. They, it wasn't true when you were 18 months old, 5 years old, or 55 years old. You are not what other people say you are. So stop letting that dictate your self-confidence or fill you with self-doubt. And for the record, you are also not the good things people tell you you are all the time. Don't live for likes. Don't live for comments on your social media. Don't, don't do things in your life just to solicit someone saying something great about you. It's a cheap, shallow, hollow way to try to gain self-esteem and self-confidence. It's fleeting, it's short-term, and it's needy. In fact, the fact that it is a necessity for you to get liked, to get people to say good things, to get comments on your social media, or to do so in your presence, indicates a lack of self-esteem and self-confidence because we know self-confidence is an internal game where we keep the promises we make to ourselves. The fourth type of flawed thinking is I am what I look like. In other words, if I don't look a certain way, like what the magazine says I should or social media says I should, if I don't look like these people, I shouldn't have self-confidence. And that's ridiculous. I can tell you straightforwardly, you're beautiful as you are especially the ladies listening to this or watching this. The world is constantly trying to get you to believe you're not enough, you don't look right, you should lose this weight, you should gain this, this should be smaller, that should be bigger, whatever it might be. They're constantly messaging women, you're not enough, you're not enough, you're not enough. You are what you look like. And this is true for men as well. Let me tell you straightforward that you are not what you look like. You are your soul, you are your spirit, you are your gifts, you are the contributions you make, you are your intentions. You are perfect as you are. That doesn't mean we don't want to look better. doesn't mean we don't want to get into shape. But we want to do that to feel better about ourselves, not for the accolades from other people. We want to do that to feel healthier and stronger and be the ultimate version of ourselves. But by no means does that mean you're not perfect as you are. By no means does it mean you are defined by what you look like. You are not defined by what you look like. You are defined by the content of your character, the way you treat other people, and the difference you make in the world. So the four flawed thoughts that I see most right now is, I am my possessions. No, you're not. I am my accomplishments. No, you're not. I am what other people tell me I am and say I am, good or bad. No, you are not. And fourth, you are not what you look like. These are flawed beliefs that lead right to self-doubt and away from self-confidence. So the things we need to do to change
change our self-confidence is A, keep the promises we make to ourselves, and B, very important, we must begin to give ourselves credit for those things when we deliver on them. I want you to remember this as well. There's a power to the way we use the two Bs, our brain and our body. See, self-confidence can also be a state, a physical state. It's very difficult when you're moving your body, sitting up straight, breathing deeply, right? You're in that physical, strong state of being, right? Right after a workout, during a workout, is when we feel our most confident because our body's at a peak state. One way to generate self-confidence is to move your body into a strong state of being. Move your body. Literally, movement creates confidence. If you think about some of the peak times of your life, whether that be the fun time you may be having with your partner physically, intimately, or laughter, or peak performance running, right? Or your great accomplishments, yes! There's a commonality to the way our body is moving at that time. If you think about the times when you're the least confident, it's usually when you wake up in the morning, isn't it? It's the most down, the most fearful, the most anxiety, or before you go to bed at night. These are two times most people experience the most amount of self-doubt, is right before bed and right when they wake up. Isn't that interesting? One of the reasons is because of how we're moving. We're laying down, we're hunched over, our breathing is shallow, there's no physical movement whatsoever. This creates a state of self-doubt right before we sleep, right when we wake up. Or if you're just kind of depressed or sick, self-doubt starts to kick in, doesn't it, right? If you ever had an injury and you couldn't move like you'd like to, that stagnation of the body begins to create self-doubt and strips us of our self-confidence. So moving our body is a gateway to self-confidence. And then our brain as well. We have to take control of our thoughts. We have to scratch the negative ones when they come in and replace them with great ones. Now, I don't believe self-talk works all the time, but I believe saying I am strong, I am good, I intend, I'm a good man, my intentions are pure, I'm a good person, I make a difference in the world, I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm generous, I'm strong, I'm faithful. Beginning to repeat these thoughts to myself and these words do generate self-confidence. I keep the promises I make to myself. I'm a man of my word. Begin to talk to yourself and think these thoughts. When you combine your brain and your body, you scratch the self-doubt. You lose those four stupid beliefs. I am my accomplishments. I am my possessions. I am what other people say I am. Or I am what I look like. These are completely flawed beliefs. We scratch those. We scratch them. We understand the process of stacking self-confidence in our life. We know we are the content of our character. And lastly, give yourself some credit. Will you please? And I'm going to tell you where to give yourself credit. And that is in the area of your intentions. A lot of my confidence comes from the fact that I keep the promises I make to myself. I know my self-doubt are thoughts that were given to me when I couldn't even defend myself as a young little boy. I know that I'm not my accomplishments. I know I'm not my possessions. I know I'm not what I look like. And I know I'm not what other people say I am. I understand the process of building self-confidence. I scratch the negative thoughts in my life. But I can tell you this, the last place I get my confidence from is my faith and my intentions. See, I know I intend to do good. Not enough of you are giving yourself credit for your inherent goodness. And I mean this, you're special in that regard. You're perfect in that regard. Just ask yourself, what are your intentions? As an individual, as a man or a woman, do you intend to do good in the world? Do you intend to want to help people? Do you intend to be a light in people's lives? Do you intend to make a difference? Do you want to live a good life where you've helped change the world and change other people's lives? Have you ever just asked yourself that? Do you? Because if the answer to that is, you know, I don't spend enough time thinking about how good my intentions are. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to do bad things. I don't want to take advantage of others. I really intend to do good. You know what? You need to give yourself more credit for the power of your intentions. There's a power in life of giving ourselves credit just for the intentions we have. Just ask yourself that. There's two types of people in life. There's the people who intend to do harm, to take advantage of people, to cheat, to cut corners, to cause hurt to others for what they think will be their own gain. Then there's people who want to be a light. They want to make a difference. They want to help. They want to contribute. They want to be somebody. They want to honor their God. They want to make a difference in the world, and their intentions are good. Too often in life, people with great intentions don't give themselves credit for how beautiful and wonderful those intentions are. And so today, just take this inventory of all the things that are wonderful about your intentions. And then just take an inventory of your faith. As a person of faith, I know that I'm favored. I know that God wants me to do good in the world. I know that I was made in His image and likeness. 
There's a power to that. There's a comfort to that. There's a confidence that comes from that. Kind of a swagger. See, people aren't smirking at me anymore. I'm smirking at them. See, I know I'm not what I look like. I know I'm not my possessions. I know I'm not my accomplishments. I'm not what other people say I am. I understand the keys of keeping the promises I make to myself. I understand scratching those limiting beliefs. I know I intend to do good. I don't always do good. I make mistakes all the time. I'm not a deity. I'm not a God. I'm a man. But I intend to do good. And my guess is, so do you. Start to give yourself a little credit just for your intentions. Know you're perfect as you are. And then begin to take these massive action steps. The final piece of the puzzle is this is that you have to believe you deserve to win. And sometimes it's not just that we think we're good, but that we've done so much, we must be worthy of winning. See, there's this adage in life, good people in life won't take more from the table of life than they think they're worthy of and they deserve. See, in business sometimes, short term, we've all seen this, someone with bad intentions can get ahead short term. But you always reap what you sow, karma is always a real thing, and eventually the people that take shortcuts, that cheat, that hurt other people, that have ill intent, the world, the universe, God sort of finds a way eventually to get them where they're supposed to be. But good people will never take more than they think they're worth, which is why the mandatory requirement for good people to win is they believe they deserve it. They believe they're worth winning. And sometimes it's not just who we are that we need to believe in, but what we've done in this sense, that sometimes you've got to outwork everybody and you've got to be willing to do the things nobody else is willing to do. So you begin to convince yourself, man, I'm doing all the things everybody else is unwilling to do. So I deserve to get the results other people aren't going to get. I'm doing the things other people aren't willing to do. I'm paying a price that's so much greater than other people that I'm worth it, that I deserve to get results they don't deserve to get because I've been willing to do the things they've been unwilling to do. So the last piece is often self-confidence can just frankly come from outworking everybody and convincing ourselves, man, I've been doing the things nobody else is willing to do. I deserve to get the results nobody else deserves to get. And that's a shift in building self-confidence. So I get asked all the time, how did I get so much attention on social media, in my businesses, email list, et cetera? I can tell you straight up, it's been constant contact. If you don't know who constant contact is, you need to know about these guys. Constant Contact's award-winning marketing platform has helped millions of small businesses, mine being one of them, stand out, stay on top of mind, and seek big results fast. They've got an easy way to promote your business with powerful tools like email, SMS marketing, social media posting, and they even do events management, what they've done for me in the past as well. You're going to reach new audiences. You're going to grow your customer list big time and communicate more effectively to sell more, raise more, and grow fast on social media. So get going and start growing your business today with a free trial at ConstantContact.com. Just go to ConstantContact.com right now. Constant Contact, helping the small stand tall. ConstantContact.com. Today we're going to talk about how to build unlimited self-confidence. And the reason that I'm covering this topic today is probably more than any other topic I've been getting asked lately about the struggles people are going through with self-doubt, not believing in themselves, negative thoughts about themselves. And I believe the solution to self-doubt is to build something bigger than that doubt, which is to build our self-confidence. And one thing to know about the fact that you doubt yourself is one, I struggle with it as well. One of the reasons I've had to go learn to build all these tools for myself is because in my life, my baseball career, my academic career, my business career, my speaking career, I've been riddled with self-doubt. That creeps up all the time in our lives. Am I enough? Am I good enough? Do I deserve this? Is this something that's part of my destiny? Should I be doing this? And if you're a religious person, I believe the adversary, if you believe in the adversary, I believe the adversary's greatest tool that he could use against you to get you to lose in your life is to get you discouraged and doubting. These are two of the most chaotic things that the adversary can do to us or that we do to ourselves in our own minds is to get ourselves doubting, to get ourselves discouraged because you can't win when you doubt and you can't win when you're discouraged. What I found out though about self-doubt is that you don't overcome it, you build something bigger than it, which means you build your self-confidence and the greater and greater your self-confidence get, it minimizes the impact self-doubt has on us. Now why is that so important? It's important because you have to understand one thing about the doubts and the negative thoughts you have about yourself. As hard as this is to accept, these are not your thoughts. 
You weren't born doubting. You weren't born discouraged. You weren't born thinking negative things about yourself. Those were thoughts that were placed in you and given to you by an external source at some time in your life. It could even be our parents. Don't do that. Be quiet. Sit down. Be a good boy. Be a good girl. Maybe it was criticism you received as a, as a little one that you may not even remember to this day. It could have been a school teacher. It could have been ridicule at school from other children. But when you were young in your formative years, these negative thoughts about yourself were planted in you by an external source. That's so powerful to understand because these things you think you believe about yourself that have become really true to you. You don't even really believe they were not your original thoughts. But the power of belief is so incredible in our lives. It's so insidious because when we have a belief about something, even if it was given to us by somebody else, our mind goes to work on proving to us that this belief is true. A belief is almost like this table right here, just the top once we get it. And what our mind tries to do is it tries to build legs under the table to reinforce that belief. So if somebody told you you weren't enough or you weren't smart enough or pretty enough or fast enough or strong enough or you don't come from the right place or you're not in the right culture, the right race, the right religion, the right height, the right IQ as a young person or you were put down and these beliefs were given to you, what happens is your mind tries to prove beliefs true so it finds references. So once you think it, your mind finds an example of your life where you weren't enough, another one where you weren't enough, you weren't smart enough, you weren't pretty enough, you weren't handsome enough, you weren't strong enough. And it finds these references and it builds like a leg and multiple legs under table and pretty soon you can't move it and it's stuck in there as a firm belief. That's why we have to guard our beliefs so preciously because our mind goes to work on finding these legs, these references, which are real experiences in our life to prove to us that that belief is true. And so although you may believe it to be true about you, these doubts and negative thoughts you have, these were not your original thoughts. That's a powerful thing to understand because you weren't born this way. You weren't born doubting. You were born perfect. You were born believing you were gonna do something great. You were born happy. You were born believing you were going to do something special with your life. As a baby, I promise you, you had no negative self-talk. You had no negative self-doubt. These are external sources. It's so important to know because those thoughts aren't really who you are. They're somebody else's thoughts they gave you because of how they felt about themselves. And so today we're going to talk about how to build self-confidence and how to eliminate self-doubt. So how do we build this self-confidence? The process of building self-confidence is actually very easy. Believe it or not, self-confidence is self-trust. Self-confidence is building a reputation with yourself that you keep your word to you, that you keep the promises you make to you. When I meet somebody who has a ton of self-confidence, I don't look at that as somebody with a big ego. There's a difference. Somebody with self-confidence has a reputation with themselves that I do the things I say I'm going to do. That's where self-confidence comes from. When I meet someone who is not self-confident, I know this is someone who has consistently made promises to themselves they've not kept. They've started a diet and done it for a while but not kept it. They've made a commitment and goals to go make a certain amount of money in business and they started down the road but then they didn't deliver on it long term to get up at a certain time of the morning and then they don't do it. And so they have a process and a habit in their life more often than not of not keeping the promises they don't make to other people. They don't keep the promises they make to themselves. And so the cool thing is self-confidence is an internal game. You do not need external accolades, external admiration in order to build self-confidence. You don't need any of those external forces. It's all done internally. You control this. And you control this by beginning today to keep the promises you make to yourself. And you have to stack the deck in your favor. Stack the game so you win. It's not good enough just to keep the promises you make to yourself. You must acknowledge it when you do it to you to give yourself credit to create confidence momentum is what I call it. So whether that's setting the deck where you're gonna get up a little bit earlier, you're gonna make a certain amount of phone calls, you miss a certain amount of appointments, you're going to eat a certain amount of calories in your fitness. You're going to spend a certain amount of time with your children or your parents. And you begin to do these things you say you're going to do. You say simple things like, I'm going to lay out my clothes the night before I go to bed every night before I go to sleep so when I wake up, that decision's made for me. And believe it or not, the fact that you just do something that simple that you then deliver on begins to build confidence. You say, I'm gonna stretch in the morning when I get up, and you do it, all of a sudden, I'm not gonna check my phone for 30 minutes. All these habits I teach, when you just begin to do the things you tell yourself you're going to do, you begin to build self-confidence, which is this reputation with yourself. So ask yourself a question right now. 
What is one thing right now, one promise I can make to myself that I'm going to begin to keep starting this minute and begin to do it? It could be um, how often I'm going to pick up a book and read it. But you begin to stack things you commit to do, and then you deliver on them, and you acknowledge them to yourself. You're in the process of building self-confidence. Why is that so important? Of all the athletes I coach, when my athletes are performing at their peak level, they're at their highest self-confidence level. In fact, I love when I watch some of the athletes I coach get interviewed, and they kind of do this aw shucks, humble routine in their uh, post-game interviews. Yeah, you know, just part of the team. You know, I got a lot. I could have done a lot better today. But inside, I know these people are incredibly self-confident people. Any of you athletes listening to this, you know this. The great athletes you know have incredible amounts of self-confidence. You have to believe in you when it's a battle, when you're a hitter against a pitcher, or when you're a quarterback against a defense, or you're a defenseman in the NHL against their best offensive player, or you're a golfer and you have to make a nine-foot putt to win a tournament, right? You better have self-confidence. In fact, the separator, more often than not, at the highest level in sports, is not they're a better shooter or a better putter or throw the ball a little bit faster because everybody throws hard in the major leagues nowadays, it seems, right? That separators their self-confidence. It's true in being a parent. It's true in being a business person. It's true in every area of our life. The separator at the top levels is self-confidence. So now you have that first thing that you're going to commit to that you're going to deliver on. Now, what I would ask you to do that now that you've done that is if you really want to build self-confidence, can you begin to extend that list of five, eight, and ten things that you are going to begin to do, that you commit to you, that you're going to do every single day to begin to stack that self-confidence? That's going to change it. Now, let's go back to the self-doubt for a second. Self-doubt is the inverse of that. I don't trust me. I don't think I'm good enough. These are thoughts placed from the outside inside your mind. The minute you acknowledge that, that's not my thought, that's someone else's. That's not, you begin to eliminate, I call it like scratching the CD. When I begin to have negative self-talk, negative thoughts, I literally picture, and I'm old by the way, but I picture an old record player or a DVD and I just scratch it, I scratch it. That thought gets scratched. I, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good looking enough, I, I, I'm not fast enough, strong enough, I'm not prepared enough. I, once they enter, that's not my thought, that's something someone gave me when I was a kid and I scratch it and I literally say to myself scratch it scratch it scratch it and over time it's like a it's like a DVD or a CD or a record player over time that thought can't be played again in your recorder when you scratch it enough times so I literally picture scratching and I say scratch it I experience self-doubt I experience negative thoughts and I scratch them I scratch them I scratch them and over time it almost becomes funny it's that thoughts impact on me starts to be minimized over time. Every time I scratch it, I picture scratching it like a DVD or a record or a CD, and I say it to myself, scratch it, scratch it, scratch it. And it, what it does is it acknowledges the thought, it loses its power over me. The first time it's still got some impact on me. The second time it might, but the fourth, fifth, seventh time, all of a sudden that thought just doesn't have the impact on me anymore because I acknowledge it's not mine. I've scratched it. And over time, my mind just doesn't want to play that song anymore. Doesn't want to play that movie anymore. And so that's how I begin to eliminate those thoughts in my mind. I build up my self-confidence and I scratch my self-doubt. There's also this misconception from people that you are certain things, meaning some people have this misconception that I am what I possess. In other words, I am my possessions. And so they link their self-confidence to their possessions. And so they're constantly trying to acquire more and more possessions, thinking that's where they get their self-confidence from. That's how they're defined as a person. I am my possessions. Couldn't be further from the truth. It's a hollow way to try to gain self-confidence by possessing things. Nothing wrong with going for material possessions. I have all kinds of them. But I don't link my confidence to those possessions, nor am I deluded into thinking if I could just possess more things, then I'll feel better about myself. So this is a mistake. There's a flawed thought. Number one flawed thought, I am my possessions. Second flawed thought, I am my accomplishments. In other words, my self-confidence is only linked to what I accomplish. So because I haven't accomplished certain things, I don't have that certain title, that certain award, that certain recognition, I don't believe in myself. I'm riddled with self-doubt. I'm defined by my accomplishments. The difficult thing about that is now all your life you're going to have to accomplish more and more and more in order to feel self-confident and eliminate self-doubt. You are not your accomplishments. You are not your possessions. You are you. You are perfect. You are beautiful. You were born to do something great with your life. If you're a person of faith 
like me, you believe God made you in his image and likeness and wants you to do something great with your life, not that you are your possessions, not that you are your accomplishments. And this is the, the social media insidious influence it has in our lives. People think, I don't feel good about myself. I've got this self-doubt. The gateway to me feeling more self-confidence is if I could possess more things or if I could accomplish more things. Yes, having nice things will make you feel better about yourself. Yes, accomplishing things certainly is a reinforcement for self-confidence, but it's not the pathway to getting it. The pathway to getting it is doing something great with your life where you keep the promises you make to yourself and acknowledge this self-doubt, this self-thought, this negative talk isn't even mine. It was given to me when it was impossible for me to defend myself as a child. And maybe it even happened in adolescence and probably some of those instances have happened you as an adult and these ones as an adult are like that thing I said earlier oh it's another time I reinforced the table I'm not good enough I'm not smart enough I'm not prepared enough I'm not the right race I'm not the right gender I don't come from the right kind of family I don't have the right education and we find these references as adults to reinforce these self-doubting beliefs we were given by somebody else as a child flawed belief is that you are your possessions you are your accomplishments third flawed belief I am what other people say I am. Wrong. You are not what other people say you are, good or bad. I see too many people that if someone says something negative about them, they believe that's who they are. This is the flawed third belief. I am my possessions. I am my accomplishments. And you know what? Or I am what other people say I am. Let me be clear with you. You are not what other people tell you you are. They, it wasn't true when you were 18 months old, 5 years old, or 55 years old. You are not what other people say you are. So stop letting that dictate your self-confidence or fill you with self-doubt. And for the record, you are also not the good things people tell you you are all the time. Don't live for likes. Don't live for comments on your social media. Don't, don't do things in your life just to solicit Someone saying something great about you. It's a cheap, shallow, hollow way to try to gain self-esteem and self-confidence. It's fleeting, it's short-term, and it's needy. In fact, the fact that it is a necessity for you to get liked, to get people to say good things, to get comments on your social media, or to do so in your presence indicates a lack of self-esteem and self-confidence because we know self-confidence is an internal game where we keep the promises we make to ourselves. The fourth type of flawed thinking is I am what I look like. In other words, if I don't look a certain way, like what the magazine says I should or social media says I should, if I don't look like these people, I shouldn't have self-confidence. And that's ridiculous. I can tell you straightforwardly, you're beautiful as you are especially the ladies listening to this or watching this. The world is constantly trying to get you to believe you're not enough. You don't look right. You should lose this weight. You should gain this. This should be smaller. That should be bigger, whatever it might be. They're constantly messaging women, you're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. You are what you look like. And this is true for men as well. Let me tell you straightforwardly, you are not what you look like. You are your soul. You are your spirit. You are your gifts. You are the contributions you make. You are your intentions. You are perfect as you are. That doesn't mean we don't want to look better. It doesn't mean we don't want to get into shape. But we want to do that to feel better about ourselves, not for the accolades from other people. We want to do that to feel healthier and stronger and be the ultimate version of ourselves. But by no means does that mean you're not perfect as you are. By no means does it mean you are defined by what you look like. You are not defined by what you look like. You are defined by the content of your character, the way you treat other people, and the difference you make in the world. So the four flawed thoughts that I see most right now is, I am my possessions. No, you're not. I am my accomplishments. No, you're not. I am what other people tell me I am and say I am, good or bad. No, you are not. And fourth, you are not what you look like. These are flawed beliefs that lead right to self-doubt and away from self-confidence. So the things we need to do to change our self-confidence is A, keep the promises we make to ourselves, and B, very important, we must begin to give ourselves credit for those things when we deliver on them. I want you to remember this as well. There's a power to the way we use the two Bs, our brain and our body. 
See, self-confidence can also be a state, a physical state. It's very difficult when you're moving your body, sitting up straight, breathing deeply, right? You're in that physical, strong state of being, right? Right after a workout, during a workout, is when we feel our most confident because our body's at a peak state. One way to generate self-confidence is to move your body into a strong state of being. Move your body. Literally, movement creates confidence. If you think about some of the peak times of your life, whether that be the fun time you may be having with your partner physically, intimately, or laughter, or peak performance running, right? Or your great accomplishments, yes! There's a commonality to the way our body is moving at that time. If you think about the times when you're the least confident, it's usually when you wake up in the morning, isn't it? It's the most down, the most fearful, the most anxiety, or before you go to bed at night. These are two times most people experience the most amount of self-doubt, is right before bed and right when they wake up. Isn't that interesting? One of the reasons is because of how we're moving. We're laying down, we're hunched over, our breathing is shallow, there's no physical movement whatsoever. This creates a state of self-doubt right before we sleep, right when we wake up. Or if you're just kind of depressed or sick, self-doubt starts to kick in, doesn't it, right? If you ever had an injury and you couldn't move like you'd like to, that stagnation of the body begins to create self-doubt and strips us of our self-confidence. So moving our body is a gateway to self-confidence. And then our brain as well. We have to take control of our thoughts. We have to scratch the negative ones when they come in and replace them with great ones. Now, I don't believe self-talk works all the time, but I believe saying I am strong, I am good, I intend, I'm a good man, my intentions are pure, I'm a good person, I make a difference in the world, I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm generous, I'm strong, I'm faithful. Beginning to repeat these thoughts to myself and these words do generate self-confidence. I keep the promises I make to myself. I'm a man of my word. Begin to talk to yourself and think these thoughts. When you combine your brain and your body, you scratch the self-doubt. You lose those four stupid beliefs. I am my accomplishments. I am my possessions. I am what other people say I am, or I am what I look like. These are completely flawed beliefs. We scratch those. We scratch them. We understand the process of stacking self-confidence in our life. We know we are the content of our character. And lastly, give yourself some credit. Will you please? And I'm going to tell you where to give yourself credit. And that is in the area of your intentions. A lot of my confidence comes from the fact that I keep the promises I make to myself. I know my self-doubt or thoughts that were given to me when I couldn't even defend myself as a young little boy. I know that I'm not my accomplishments. I know I'm not my possessions. I know I'm not what I look like. And I know I'm not what other people say I am. I understand the process of building self-confidence. I scratch the negative thoughts in my life. But I can tell you this, the last place I get my confidence from is my faith and my intentions. See, I know I intend to do good. Not enough of you are giving yourself credit for your inherent goodness. And I mean this, you're special in that regard. You're perfect in that regard. Just ask yourself, what are your intentions? As an individual, as a man or a woman, do you intend to do good in the world? Do you intend to want to help people? Do you intend to be a light in people's lives? Do you intend to make a difference? Do you want to live a good life where you've helped change the world and change other people's lives? Have you ever just asked yourself that? Do you? Because if the answer to that is, you know, I don't spend enough time thinking about how good my intentions are. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to do bad things. I don't want to take advantage of others. I really intend to do good. You know what? You need to give yourself more credit for the power of your intentions. There's a power in life of giving ourselves credit just for the intentions we have. Just ask yourself that. There's two types of people in life. There's the people who intend to do harm, to take advantage of people, to cheat, to cut corners, to cause hurt to others for what they think will be their own gain. Then there's people who wanna be a light. They wanna make a difference. They wanna help, they wanna contribute. They wanna be somebody. They wanna honor their God. They wanna make a difference in the world and their intentions are good. Too often in life, people with great intentions don't give themselves credit for how beautiful and wonderful those intentions are. And so today, just take this inventory of all the things that are wonderful about your intentions. And then just take an inventory of your faith. As a person of faith, I know that I'm favored. I know that God wants me to do good in the world. I know that I was made in his image and likeness. There's a power to that. There's a comfort to that. There's a confidence that comes from that. Kind of a swagger. See, people aren't smirking at me anymore, I'm smirking at them. See, 
I know I'm not what I look like. I know I'm not my possessions. I know I'm not my accomplishments. I'm not what other people say I am. I understand the keys of keeping the promises I make to myself. I understand scratching those limiting beliefs. I know I intend to do good. I don't always do good. I make mistakes all the time. I'm not a deity. I'm not a God. I'm a man. But I intend to do good. And my guess is, so do you. Start to give yourself a little credit just for your intentions. Know you're perfect as you are. And then begin to take these massive action steps. The final piece of the puzzle is this is that you have to believe you deserve to win. And sometimes it's not just that we think we're good, but that we've done so much, we must be worthy of winning. See, there's this adage in life, good people in life won't take more from the table of life than they think they're worthy of and they deserve. See, in business sometimes, short term, we've all seen this, someone with bad intentions can get ahead short term. But you always reap what you sow. Karma is always a real thing. And eventually the people that take shortcuts, that cheat, that hurt other people, that have ill intent, the world, the universe, God sort of finds a way eventually to get them where they're supposed to be. But good people will never take more than they think they're worth, which is why the mandatory requirement for good people to win is they believe they deserve it. They believe they're worth winning. And sometimes it's not just who we are that we need to believe in, but what we've done in this sense, that sometimes you've got to outwork everybody and you've got to be willing to do the things nobody else is willing to do. So you begin to convince yourself, man, I'm doing all the things everybody else is unwilling to do. So I deserve to get the results other people aren't going to get. I'm doing the things other people aren't willing to do. I'm paying a price that's so much greater than other people that I'm worth it, that I deserve to get results they don't deserve to get because I've been willing to do the things they've been unwilling to do. So the last piece is often self-confidence can just frankly come from outworking everybody and convincing ourselves, man, I've been doing the things nobody else is willing to do. I deserve to get the results nobody else deserves to get. And that's a shift in building self-confidence. So I'm asking you this, I'm just curious. How about right now? Mm. Like you sit in front of me, you've had all these accomplishments. Do you still have any struggles with this stuff? Like to this day with, cause stuff I teach people how to get better at, most of the time it's still stuff that I'm working on myself and I struggle. So does yeah. Jamie Kern Lima still struggle to this day with her worthiness? Every single day, every single day and a little less every mm. single day. I think it's a lifelong journey. And here's a huge breakthrough that I'm going to share okay. first on your show. I've never spoken about this before, but it is powerful. It's changed my life is there is a massive difference between self-confidence and self-worth. What's the difference? Okay. So here's the thing. And y'all, when I had this breakthrough and really started doing the work here, it changed everything in my life. So mm. self-confidence, right? It's, it's, it's deeply internal. Of course, it's a trait, um, but it is most closely linked with external things. So, you know, the willingness to try, the confidence to try, the willingness to go for it, how you assess things on the outside, meaning how you assess your strengths, your skills, how you compare to others, right? Your, your self-confidence you build, and it's super, super important, but it is most closely linked to things that can fluctuate that aren't always in your control, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a boxer story about how, yeah. you know, the boxer that, that wins is automatically 20% more, uh, you know, better, a better boxer because yep. all of a sudden they believe they are, yes. right? self comp but all of a sudden if that guy loses or that woman loses, mm -hmm. you know, three or four times in a row, their self-confidence can fluctuate. Mm -hmm. And True. your self-worth is deeply internal. It's believing you are enough exactly as you are you are enough you are valuable you're worthy exactly as you are it's deeply internal and it doesn't fluctuate mm -hmm. based on external things now here's the big breakthrough you can be so for anyone listening right i'm gonna get fired up i'm gonna yeah, jump out of the seat <laughs> jump out of the seat for anyone right. listening right now if you are someone who is like okay when this thing finally happens then i'm gonna be enough you know when mm -hmm. when when i finally get married or have the kids or i finally hit a you know seven figures in my business or eight figures or nine figures or ten figures when i finally get my six pack when i finally yeah. right and then you get that thing and it's like okay it's great for a minute yes but it's never quite enough. Yes. It's because you have built confidence. You have built confidence in that journey. Now you have confidence in your in your body and your six pack. Now you have confidence in your business, but your self-worth has not changed. 
And you, there are so many people, and this is me most my entire life, where I thought if I achieve enough, mm. I'll finally feel enough. Yeah. If I achieve, if I accomplish this thing, if I build a billion dollar business, if I feel confident in a swimsuit, whatever it is, then I'll finally feel enough. Mm. But you can have all the confidence in the world and you will not be fulfilled if you do not have strong self-worth. Wow. And that is huge because- Wow, yeah. wow, 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 can I just say something? Uh, wow, uh, you just described me. Yeah. Like even now. Yeah. I've worked, that is awesome what you just flipping said right there. Holy smokes. Because you and I talk all the time. You've never said that to me before. Whoa. So sorry, you guys. <laughs> so I just want to say this to you. I have really built a lot of self-confidence, but I don't know that I build that much self-worth. And so it is why I haven't enjoyed a lot of the successes that I've had. And to the extent that I have, and you too. Yeah. Man, you are on there. So a couple things here, a few things. So I've watched you. I'm getting to know you better. I consider yeah. you a friend now. I enjoy our time. It just flies by. You know, I mean, I, I mean that. Like uh, I've told you before, you're making me want to do better and be better. Yeah. Just your example, just your being does that for me. But there's some things inside you I've seen that I think I do well, but being around you, I want to Do you know how many better. people are going to say, there's no way I can study this dude based on some of the stuff they've heard already? About you? I don't really care. They, they're yeah. crazy not to study you. Yeah, yeah. Well, here, here's what's nuts about that. I mean, by the it's way. so sad though, man. You know, like, because I'll, I'll study anybody. I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're white, black, me male, either. female. Show me the results, man. That's all I care about. Just show me what works. There are we'll probably just, people who are ultimately aren't going to become successful anyway. They're looking for reasons not to win instead of reasons to win. Uh -huh. Usually, the people that are magnetized to you and I are people who are looking for reasons to win. That's yeah, who yeah. most of you are that are listening to this. You're trying to find a freaking way to win. That's one of my favorite closes, by the way. What's that? Are you looking for reasons to do this or not? Right. Do that's this? the whole bottom line. The bottom line is, if you're looking for a reason to win, you're following the right two people, right? right. We yeah. get we come at it from a different perspectives. But one thing, those of you listening to this, and grants a, a, a a, a Catholic as well, but as a Christian, I'm not naive enough to think that the Lord only puts Christians in my life to teach me things. That'd be obscene. That'd be ridiculous. The Lord's going to bring all kinds of different people into my life to teach me, to alter me, to influence me. He's using me as his tool, and of course some of these people are going to be catalysts for that, so that's insane not and, to and think man, that. My whole life, you know, I have prayed, like, show me the way, man. I know you do. Show me the way. Show me how to get my money right. Show me how to get my business right. Show me how to treat people right. Show me one of the big things that was missing in my life was a wife. Yeah. Show me how to pick the right wife. Yeah, and you did. You know, how, show me how to become a good husband yeah. uh, and, and, and to be a good husband yep. now that I got a, the right wife. Right. Show me how to be a good dad. I was terrified of becoming yeah. a dad. Were you? Oh, terrified. Yeah, well, you think you have this, I have it too, but you have this relentless desire to be the better version of you, mm -hmm. to be the next expression of you, to find out where you could be. Mm -hmm. That's what's, that's the real answer. You're excited about finding out who you could be. Yeah, yeah. That, and I am too. I'm like passionate about that. I'm like, I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I'm anxious to see the next version of me. I think you're unbelievable with that. But I want to ask you uh, some things I've observed. So just want to go through these with you sure. a little bit. Okay. You keep promises you make to yourself for the most part. In other words, if you tell yourself you're going to do something, do you keep those promises? Not always. Okay. You know, so so with like workouts, I've been really slack, as you can tell, on workouts lately. I think you look great. I've told Thank you, you. this guy's 59 years old. Thank you. I mean, um, I got here this morning. Yeah. And there's a security guard in the parking lot. I said, I got to find Cardone's offices. The first thing the guy said to me, he goes, Oh, I know where he is. And we start to walk. He goes, when you see him, you're not going to believe this. I thought he was 43 years old. He's 59 years old. I said, I, I already knew that. I said, you're kidding me. That's the first thing the guy told oh, me that's about awesome. you. That's how young you look. So you're doing something right with that. Thank you. Thank you. But how from a business perspective, do you keep the promises that you make? Like uh, you say, uh, 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 always. Yeah. That, always. Uh, I, might, I might be a little long on them. Yeah. You know, it might take me a little longer to get to yeah. it. And that, by the way, that's an observation I've made about you. Yeah. He has this thing. No, I'm telling you the truth, especially when you're around me a little bit. You have total optimum self-confidence in your business capacity. I watch it with you. You know what you're doing. You know you're skilled. You're confident. You're beyond confident. You're certain. Uh -huh. The more certain uh -huh. person wins, uh -huh. right? I think that's because you've kept promises you make to yourself. I think the number one requirement in being a confident person is that you start by keeping... When I meet someone who lacks self-confidence in an area, in an area, 
I'll tell myself, this is someone who just simply doesn't keep the promises they make to themselves mm. in that mm. area. I like right? that. And, that's the, and the, the reverse is true in your body. Yeah. yeah you yeah. and I have talked a lot about that uh -huh. before. Like, you look great, but your confidence level in your fitness and all that stuff isn't the same as it is in business. And it's probably because you miss some workouts once in a while. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. I do. And, and <laughs> No, it's an area that we but, talk about. But it's people. also like, yeah, okay. So No, yeah, but yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's true. No, go ahead. What are you going to say? Well, say it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've never, I've just never. It's not a been, priority. Exactly. You told I've, me that. I've never had. invested much time in my body. Yeah, you told me that. Like, like I know some people like, like, like literally when I get ready, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even look. I'll go three and four days without looking at myself. You told me that. So, so, um, and and part of that, you know, is is freedom. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not locked up in this identity of being five eight and 170 pounds. I don't think I'm a body. Right. I know that. I am not a physical unit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, difference, is, the difference with me and you is yeah. that, so f first off, I know that you think that, and I know mm -hmm. that's not a part. This is really good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you something that I think I have. Okay. Yeah. Part of my confidence in business is that I think my body, I think nowadays more and more business people train like athletes and more mm -hmm. and more athletes train like business people. LeBron mm -hmm. James is not the same guy yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that uh, Julius Irving was, right? Yeah, LeBron yeah, well, James totally, is a businessman, totally. like Jay-Z says. He's a business. He's a business yeah, man, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so more of these guys, Tom yeah. Brady has a bus selling book out right yeah. now, right? He's a businessman. Yeah. And so more athletes think like businessmen. Yeah, I agree. And I think, and by the way, you are super fit, but I think one of the advantages for people, if they can keep their body fit, not big or yeah. muscular, yeah. but high energy and healthy. Yeah. I watch what you eat. You do eat healthy. You do yeah. eat clean. We just did right now. Yeah, right? Yeah, you give yeah. me that little terrible thing you made me eat. Yeah. I, I put good fuel in my car, but I, I'll tell you, you today, I still don't put premium. I know you don't. I don't put the best gas in my car because I think it's a scam. But I just put right, whatever. Me huh? Me neither. Yeah, I put the best gas in there to get me from back and forth because it's the least car anyway. I'm going to flip it and turn, me, it, turn it in. Me too. Bye -bye. But I think your business self-confidence comes from doing that. There's another thing yeah. I observed about you. I want to ask you about it. You're aggressive. Mm -hmm. You are aggressive. Mm -hmm. What that means is even if you have a plan. I'm probably the most aggressive I agree. business person I know. Me too. I think you're the most aggressive business person that I've met. And, and the other thing you'll do is in the moment you'll jump on something. Uh -huh. Like if it's not planned and it could get something done, it could close, it could yeah, grow yeah, something, yeah, you'll yeah. do it. Talk yeah. about that for a minute. How important is aggression, yeah. Yeah. being offensive, yeah. jumping dude, on the dude, moment? Dude, I, I walk into every environment looking for, for a, a, a deal to ink. Hmm. You know, I, I'm just telling you, if you need to be, if you need to know or when, when you're with me, I'm looking for a deal. Yeah. I don't care if it was my mama. Mm -hmm. If my mama, my mom died about six, seven years, eight years ago, I guess. And, but if she came back, I mean, literally, if I had 30 minutes with her, mm. I'd spend 28 minutes, you know, just reminiscing and two minutes trying to close her for something. Something. <laughs> I'd be like, there got to be something you got. Yeah, and you lose so, interest quick if that's not there. You're out of well, it. Well... I don't lose interest quick, but I definitely try to set up something for later, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I, I think, I believe in my product. So, like, I'm always looking to how do I insert the product. Yeah. I'm way beyond now anybody uh, calling me a sales guy. Yeah. He's always selling. He's, he's always marketing. Right. He's always promoting. Yeah, you can say all those things about me. I already know that. Right, of course you are. Okay, you let me say doing. it for you. Yeah. I'm always selling, I'm always right. promoting, I'm always marketing. Yeah. Okay, so you're not, tell, tell me something about myself I don't know, because I already know Yeah, that. and those are positives. Yeah, those and are you're saying it about me because you don't do it yourself. That's correct. Yeah, that's like we said earlier today. If you had the cure for cancer, you wouldn't feel like a salesman tell if you're spreading it around. You tell right. literally everybody. So if you feel like yeah. you're be what you're doing benefits somebody, it improves the quality of their life, yeah. you're, you're at fault for not spreading that. For and not shame closing. on you. If you're selling a product you don't feel good about. Yeah, you're in the wrong place, exactly. And shame on, if you, shame on you if you're spending your time hating on something you've already given up on. That number one thing is, is uh, you and I, you interviewed me earlier and I was saying, I've never really competed with other people. I'm not concerned with other people. Do That is wasted energy that steals from my focus. Yeah. I'm worried about what I'm doing, my team's doing, my company's doing. Anything outside of that is a, someone is trying to rob me of yeah. my elite, hyper-focused state. I'm not doing that crap. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're doing it wrong. I don't care where well, you're I doing Well, I do when it. I'm going to slow. Of course, see, you got time see, to think. you said something to me this morning yeah. about your frequency. Yes. You know, I like the vibration yes. rate. Yep. But man, as long as I hit my right frequency up there, like when I'm bing, 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 bing. Me too. Like I don't get, I don't, I don't get caught up in all this stuff. The I told you. Stuff. I told you one of the things I've observed about you that they're going to think I'm weird for yeah. is that I think you vibrated a super high frequency, uh, meaning your energy level, your capacity to move things and influence yeah, things yeah. is at a high, high level. Yeah. And by the way, I, I will, now that we're hanging out a little bit, I'm going to get you to even go one millimeter further by being a little bit more fit, by being yeah. in a better state. 
I'm gonna help you do that. I just need more Pilates, dude. You don't. The, he Pilates. is a Pilates expert, but I'm, the no, not, thing, I, would, I, I need a real expert Pilates person. No, because you when don't, you do it, but no. you light a core up so hot. Well, I thought you didn't need it. No, no. When I get a really uh -huh. good, because I, I I don't really know how to do it myself. Right. You don't even really do Pilates either. You just bought the leotards. <laughs> right. You got the leotards, but you don't really know how to Pilates. Probably not. Nobody knows. Not. What does that even mean? He's a gr this is a grown man talking Pilates right in front of me. By the way, just so you know, your fitness and all that stuff would give you even yeah. another gear. No, you're right. You're I, right. I, I totally agree. Well, I, I don't even wonder yeah. whether I'm right about that. I know that I'm I right know, about and that. And I know you're right.